everyone. How are we doing tonight? Great, great. Well, welcome to this evening's performance at the Millennium Stage. We are so happy to have you. Tonight's performance is brought to you in collaboration with the ASCAP Foundation, which is the American Society for Composers, Authors, and Publishers. Here to introduce our host for the evening is Colleen McDonough, the director of the ASCAP Foundation. Please welcome her to the stage. Thank you. Good evening. And as you just heard, my name is Colleen McDonough. I'm the director of the ASCAP Foundation, which is a public charity that supports music education programs throughout the country, and also, <coughs> excuse me, supports uh, aspiring songwriters and composers. We're really glad you're here tonight as we welcome you to Songwriters, the Next Generation. It's a program of the ASCAP Foundation in the Kennedy Center, which tonight and tomorrow night will showcase the work of emerging songwriters and composers, from the worlds of folk, jazz, and country music on this beautiful millennium stage. Songwriters, The Next Generation was conceived by the late Dr. Billy Taylor, the wonderful jazz pianist, educator, and composer who was an ASCAP Foundation board member and the Kennedy Center's artistic director for jazz. With us this evening to introduce our music creator artists and to engage them in a discussion about what is behind their music and their creative process is an ASCAP singer-songwriter who hosts the nationally syndicated public radio concert program, Mountain Stage. He is also a prolific children's music recording artist and in the 1970s enjoyed a top 10 hit with his witty novelty song, Junk Food Junkie. Please welcome Larry Gross. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colleen, and welcome to all of you here at the Millennium Stage and also to you folks watching there online. I think you're going to be very happy you came this evening. We've got some great, great talent, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Once again, I'm honored to be a part of Songwriters the Next Generation, as I have the last four years. As you know, ASCAP is very important to people who write songs and who write music because they collect the royalties that we couldn't collect ourselves. And until 1914, they celebrated their 100th anniversary last year. Until 1914, writers and composers and songwriters did not get those royalties, and it was very difficult to make a living by doing that. And now all of that's changed because of ASCAP. Well, let's begin the evening. And our first guest is somebody I know well because she's appeared on Mountain Stage before. And I know what a great songwriter she is and what a fine singer and guitar player. She's a great slide guitar player, too. Uh, she grew up in a very musical family, but it was not singer-songwriter music. It was classical music. Her parents both were, are, not were, are famous classical uh, performers. Her dad, Pincus, is violinist and conductor, and her mother, Eugenia, is a flutist. But she took a different direction and began to write songs and sing songs. And she's combined with other folks, too, besides just her own solo albums. She's done several, seven solo albums. Besides that, she's also joined up with people like Janice Ian, Willie Porter, Aaron McEwen, and a group called Winter Bloom, a quartet that was on Mountain Stage about five years ago. They get together only in the winter. She brought a friend with her, and I think you're going to enjoy them very much. Would you please make welcome Natalia Zuckerman. This is my friend Meg Tui. In the fabulous blazer. So many times I ought to know my way by now Just a couple old stores in one hotel And that covered bridge downtown But nothing looks familiar here It's all been rearranged Well, I've been here so many times 
without the courage to change and i've been here so many times and every time there you are i mean you work at the welcome center can't really get too far this time I'm gonna drive on by, switch into the passing lane. Cause I've been here so many times without the courage to change. If you wanna know the road you travel in, just close your eyes. When you wanna be heard, it's best to practice. So many times we don't bother to say hello. Just how long you've been gone this time, how long before you go. Be kind to the visitor, we're all strangers trying to feel less strange. We've been here so many times without the courage to change. And if you want to know, Just close your eyes When you wanna be heard It's best to practice listening Won't make you through the dark Ooh, There's enough moonlight to light the way, baby been here many times but only in those rooms as uh, an audience member so it's a real honor to be here today and uh, be amongst these fine musicians and to be representing ASCAP which has done right by both of us many times um, well this next song came from uh, a challenge I got from a friend to write a song with the words feather boa in the song not the easiest thing, maybe. And, um, but uh, I thought of the Toulouse-Lautrec prince of the Moulin Rouge, the women doing the can-can with the feather boas. And um, I did a little bit of internet searching like you do and found out that the, the woman that Toulouse-Lautrec painted the most, her name was Jane Avril, and she was about yay big. And she had a precursor to uh, what we know as restless leg syndrome. So she couldn't stop moving her her little legs, and uh, she invented the can-can. True story. So this is a song about Jane. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes, you can, can Jane Avery Show them all how it's done One glimpse of stocking is still a thrill When you don't see how many times they're mending Yes, you can, can Jane Avery A feather boa and some fraying silk You lift your skirt and their hearts stood still You made them think this is what they're missing Oh, what you put on, yeah You took it off so you don't have to take it home You know what I'm saying So you move down to the strip Only way you could think to keep on dancing All swaying body and bright red lips You still find those lights enchanting Sometimes you like it more than you know you should Mostly it's a game of grin and bear it Sweaty fat hands with dollar bills A gold band should sit where those tan lines faded Oh, would you take off it And put back on before you get back What happens here stays here The one who says that is never the one waiting Je m'appelle la Malanite Je ne suis qu'une toute petite femme et dont feu immense Which means I may be a tiny woman, but my fire is huge. Oh, yes, what well, we put on mm -hmm. and take back off before we get back. Oh, what you put on, you took it off so you don't have to take it on. Yes, you can, can, yes, you can. Yes, you can, can, Jane Aubrey. Show them all how it's done. Merci beaucoup. Let it go, let it go. The cold never bothered me anyway. Sorry, my niece is here and I didn't want her to get bored. <laughs> you didn't think I knew that song, did you? I, th I think everyone knows that song. <laughs> 14 more cents through ASCAP. Just went to Disney or something like that. Um, so my latest record that I have here this evening, I still call them records, I do. Um, it's called Come Thief, Come Fire, and it's all songs about uh, thievery and arson. And um, <laughs> true story. So uh, I was writing the songs and I heard this amazing story about a guy named Vernon Vernon, that's how he goes. And uh, he was a firefighter in the Woodstock, New York area. In the summer of 97, there were 50 barn fires all on his family property. And he became this lauded hometown hero because he put them out single-handedly. And it turns out that he was uh, lighting them on, on fire. So I became slightly obsessed with this psychotic individual and wrote a lot of songs called Burnin' Vernon 1 through 17. Two, only two of the songs made the record mercifully, but um, this, is, this is one of them. Lived your life in a 
shadow Long and dark like the ones in the middle Watch them dance around the lines of your property Wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your family You watch them all Watch them all fade away yeah. Why do you need a hero? It's only gonna disappoint you You're following a broken arrow Making circles round your heart When you're looking for a new place to start Never meant to do anybody harm Made sure the house was safe on the family farm Colors go from red to charcoal black Is that what makes you want to come back in the end? You want to watch it all Watch it all fade away Why do you need a hero? Who's only gonna disappoint you? Start with a matchbook in my hand More like a calling than a flame Does it make me any less of a man If you hear me say, if you hear me say see the clock. Can you point out the clock? We're going to play this one, and that's, that's probably going to be the one. Um, so uh, I'm going to teach you this little repeating chorus. comes around like 11 D times, so you will get it. I don't see a clock. I don't see a clock. The time is now. So, um... This is your part, it goes like this. Gas station roses, last minute plea, wrapped up in plastic like a leftover meal. That's what I got for all my time. Gas station roses and a dusty valentine. And if you don't know the words by the 11th time, just do your best snarky face, because it feels real good. Gas station roses, last minute plea, wrapped up in plastic like a leftover meal. That's what I got for all my time. A gas station roses and a dusty valentine. 
Well, I'm an old suitcase in the corner Covered up in stickers of the places that I've been Looking for someone to come unlock me Someone to come around Spin my little wheels I got gas station roses Last minute please Wrapped up in plastic like a leftover me That's what I got for all my time That's what I got for all my time Gas yeah, station roses and a dusty valentine As worn out as my Neil Young records I'm as bored as Saturday down in detention hall So write me something there on the blackboard That would make the face blush on a paper doll I'll Give me gas station roses Last minute flea Wrapped up in plastic like a leftover meal that's what I got for all my time Gas station roses and a dusty valentine Love is a sculpture, it's cast out of plaster and I went and I dropped her right in the middle of the floor Now time is an asshole who forgot your birthday I went and brought you flowers from down at the corner store You gave me gas station roses Last minute please Wrapped up in plastic like a leftover meal That's what I got for all my station roses and a dusty valentine you gave me wilted roses from down at that valentine i got some wilted roses so much. What an honor to play here. And uh, I'm Natalia Zuckerman, Megan Toohey. Thank you very much. Natalia Zuckerman and her, you heard, I think, a couple of tunes there from the latest, her seventh CD called Come Thief, Come Fire. And that was Megan Tui with her playing the guitar. Megan is a songwriter and singer in her own right, as you could tell there. She's also been on Mountain Stage. Last time she was on was with the Weepies, if you know that group. She was playing along with them. Come Thief, Come Fire is going to be for sale afterwards. So if you want to take home a little bit of Natalia Zuckerman's music, uh, this now you can do it easily by picking one up. And I'm sure she'll be back there to say hello to you after this is all over. Well, it's time to bring on a second act of the evening, and this group is, uh, doesn't have vocals. It's a, it's a jazz quartet, but the two guys that are in the center of it are Jacob Webb, who plays the keyboards, and Todd Shefflin, who's a saxophone player. Todd's from Philadelphia originally, and Jacob's from out in Kansas, so if you're a Notre Dame basketball fan, don't be talking about that to him because Wichita State will be beating them in a couple of days here. 
And that's what, they, that's what they told me, at least, the shockers. But these guys got together. They met at a great jazz program that goes on at William Patterson University in New Jersey, um, where I guess Jacob went there first, and he was, he was quite the star there. And then they, they hooked up there. They decided that they were in the same groove. They wanted to make music together. And since 2009, they've been doing just that. They made uh, several albums uh, of, lot of their own compositions, and the most recent one has a tune called uh, Jet Setters, which has been on the jazz charts on Billboard, and I think the single was up in the top five, and you'll see why, because I'm sure they're going to play that tune for you. They've, together and separately, they've also played with a lot of great, great folks over the last few years, including Ashford and Simpson, Aretha Franklin, Patti LaBelle, Anita Baker, and ASCAP has already honored these guys um, by giving them the foundation, ASCAP Foundation Reach Out and Touch Award in honor of Nick Ashford. I think they're ready, so here you go. Please welcome, if you would, the JT Project. What's up, everybody? How you doing? What's going on? I know it's a Thursday, you probably came from work or something, but we're here to have a good time tonight. Oh, that was real bad. Can I, can I get some love? Because we need some, we need so we can give to you. This is a dialogue. So thank you for that introduction. Thank you to ASCAP Foundation. Thank you to the Kennedy Center. This is an honor to be here, truly. We are the JT Project, and every, everything we write, everything that Jacob and I write has a story. So we have a short set tonight, so we created what we call the TC Suite, for all of you to enjoy, the TC Suite, in which we start with a song called TC. Uh, Jacob had this girl that he wanted to express his feelings to, but he had this fear of rejection, and so often, a lot of us suffer from that, you know, and we, we have to push through. So that's what TC is about. We're going to play a short snippet. So the first part is that fear. And then we're going to go into the song we played actually at the ASCAP Foundation Awards back in December at uh, Jazz at Lincoln Center in New York. And this song is called Daddy, I Miss You. And this song is about a, uh, a young very young woman that we know who who lost her father far too soon so as we enter that composition I encourage you all to think about you know you don't have to have lost a father to connect with the song but I want you all to think about any kind of relationship that you have with your parents or if you are parents you know just get in that headspace with us and then we'll move into the second part of TC which is the overcoming of the fear of rejection. So that's the, the TC suite, and we hope you enjoy. Thank you.
Ross Alston on the bass. Ross Alston on the bass. No, that's not enough. Ross Alston on the bass. Come on. Nathan Webb on the drums. Nathan Webb on the drums. On keyboards, the J of the JT Project, my co-writer and our musical director, Jacob Webb. Jacob Webb. I'm the T of the JT Project, Todd Shefflin on saxophone. Thank you all for coming out. It was an honor to be here. We have uh, some CDs for sale. We're going to be coming off the stage right now to uh, sign them and sell them. And uh, I know Natalia has some CDs too. Definitely pick them up. But thank you so much. We are the JT Project. Take care. Jacob and Todd right there, the JT Project, and you heard they got some CDs. We're going to sit down in a minute here and get some chairs out here, and uh, Jacob and Todd are going to sit with me, and, and Natalia's coming out, and Megan, and we'll talk for just a moment. We've got a few minutes left before the hour ends. When they get out here, we'll give them one more round of applause before I ask the first question. Let's wait just a minute. Let them, let them all get out here. And then you can give them what they deserve. Thank you guys for coming out to the Millennium Stage at the Kennedy Center and being with us for this uh, special thing that, that occurs once a year. The ASCAP Foundation puts this on. All right, boys. Y'all can sit down there if you want. And we'll get one more. There they come. Now, give them a hand. How about it? <laughs> JT Project, Natalia Zuckerman. Some great talent. So let me start out talking with Natalia, since I haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> An obvious question I'm sure you get asked a lot is, uh, growing up in a family like you did, there was uh, big-time classical music uh, I'm, no doubt you, t you took classical music lessons. I would think you couldn't avoid that, if whether you wanted to or not. How did you, how did you go from there to where you are now? Um, yeah, music was required in my household, thank God. And uh, I started out on violin. Um, and uh, it was just, that instrument is incredibly difficult. And it sounded like I was slaughtering a small farm animal, really. Um, <laughs> I went to a... Pretty progressive elementary school. We learned, you know, Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger songs to learn about American history, and uh, so I just was so I loved that, and it it didn't equate to me that that was music. Actually, it seemed like something completely separate. But I just begged, please let me play guitar and sing songs, and they of course said, "Great, you found your path." When did when did that start? When did you get the guitar? I was a fetus. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Handed that to me. Uh, I learned some guitar and uh, as a really young child, and then um, studied a little bit of classical in high school and in college, and then. Uh, so when was your first there. song? Oh, it was about a mermaid, and. Uh, <laughs> she, I bet she could sing it. I'm not going to ask her to do that. Most yeah. people can actually. I haven't remember. registered it with ASCAP yet, so <laughs> yeah. I need yeah. to. Most people can yeah. remember the first song they ever wrote or tried to write, unless it was a they hit. were ultra <laughs> young, but. Uh, was it was it very? Did you start before you were a teenager, even writing songs, making up songs? I should say. I, I really did, yeah. And, uh, and then I got to college. I went to Oberlin, um, and I studied some classical guitar, and um, and then ended up being a visual artist there. And didn't really pick up the guitar again until after college. Really started writing in earnest uh, after college. And you still do both. You still are into visual art, also. Right? I do, yeah. And th that's another thing I was going to get into. I'm glad you brought it up. That what. What is the uh, relationship there, or is there any relationship besides the fact you have to be inspired to do both? Oh, yeah, I mean, I think I'm a storyteller, you know, and so I like to tell stories in many media. And uh, the the music is, is a lot more um, personal, maybe. I think I, I'm a mural painter primarily and a public artist, so that's more telling other people's stories. But the, the music has been about um, kind of my own journey. 
And when did you guys meet, Megan? How, how long have y'all been playing together? Um, a while? Gosh, I don't, I don't remember. It was, it was like a miracle happened. You don't really know when it happened. It just kind of hits you. That's what it was like when I started playing with her. Yeah. It's great. You, you sound great together. And I mean, the, the, the style of the guitar is really, really super. When did you, when did you start writing songs? Um, same, actually. I grew up in a pretty musical family, too. My dad was a music teacher, and he used to bring home a different instrument every week um, for my brother and I to sort of fiddle around on. So I played everything from violin to French horn to drums. And then I met the guitar, and I kind of had a love affair. Um, and I started writing songs. I took classical piano and played in band and orchestra and sang in chorus, so musical theater, everything pretty much. I think most of us probably did. You'll probably hear that. Yeah, well, most people that come on mountain stage, they, they, either their parents played music or their parents loved music. Yeah, yeah. And they listened sure. to the, the records set all the time. You were, in, it was, you were surrounded by it, and then you were drawn to one thing or the other. Let me, let me turn it over here to uh, Jacob and Todd. I'll ask you guys this. Well, you guys have an interesting thing because these guys are not really officially a duo. You are. The JT Project is, is, is both of you guys. It's Jacob and it's Todd. Um, before we get into how that happened, you, I read that you were playing gigs when you were 15 years old in Philadelphia. Is that right? Oh, that, that is correct. Yes. Uh, no, I just started playing around town, little Italian restaurants and different things, playing the American Songbook with, uh, you know, various side musicians in Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, I, and I, I booked those gigs myself. You know, I was very entrepreneurial, that, you know, because I, I realized that, <clears throat> you know, since no one knew, knew who I was because I was so, so young, I figured the only way I would get to play out is if I booked my own gigs. So there you go. <laughs> It's a way to save a little money that way, too. Your, uh, well, one more question. Um, did you learn, I mean, did you pick up the saxophone very early? Uh, I actually picked it up when I was uh, nine years old. My um, elementary school had a great you know, music program, and I had just moved to a new town, and I didn't know anybody, so, and I was scared. So the, the, the kids who I thought were kind of cool, who I thought I would connect with, they all picked up the saxophone in the concert band, you know, in fourth grade. Mm. So I thought, well, let me, let me follow in, the, in that step and, and join. And then by sixth grade, everybody quit. That's going to say, <laughs> you're the only one left, is but, what I would right, guess. And then, and then, you know, I continued just for fun. And then it, it wasn't until I got into my early teens that I became very serious about my craft. Yeah. And Jacob, that's your brother on the drums, right? That is correct. So you obviously... Did, you, did everybody in your family play music? That's a great, a great question. Um, we basically, my brother and I, uh, we started playing together. Uh, we were both drummers, and uh, we both started playing in the church, and um, it was a great experience. I have a sister as well. She's a vocalist, and, and an interesting thing about how I decided to play piano was, um, you know, like I said, we started out in church, and and we took a lot of lessons, and um, it was to the point where me and my brother would be battling, like playing drums one after the next, mm. and it'd be so intense, you know, and I was just like, man, I got to do something else, because he's surpassing me, and I'm, you know, I got to do something else. So we decided, okay, well, how about this? I'll get on piano, so my brother will play drums, and then my sister can sing, and we, you know... Um, our upbringing is in the Midwest uh, from Kansas, and we formed a group um, called the Web 3, sort of like the Jackson 5, but our group is called the Web 3, which is great. So musically, yes, we have, um, our, our family is, is definitely into your sister, you still, do the three of y'all ever play together anymore? You know, my sister, you know, she's, she's big now. She has, you know, all these great gigs that she calls me on, you know. And, yeah, good. And, and likewise. And, uh, yeah, so we're all still playing, you know. Well, then how did you two, and I, I know you went to the same college. It's a, it's a strong program. William Patterson, I was talking to Todd about that. And, and now uh, uh, Christian McBride is the head of that uh, program now, right? There's always some big-time jazz person that's the head of it. You went there first? Actually, Todd went there first, oh, but there first. It's, it's a great story. Um, in 2007, I, I remember um, my first day at William Patterson as a, as a freshman, I went into the, the music practice room, 
And from a distance, I heard this, 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 this beautiful sound. Um, and one of my, the person that I met, his name is Moses Howard. He was one of the first friends I met at William Patterson. He was like, yeah, that's, that's this guy, Todd, you know? And I was like, well, this guy, Todd, I need to meet this guy, you know? And from that point on, I just remember that sound. And I opened the door, and there, there Todd was. And, you know, seven years later, eight years later, we're still together. That's so. cool. And when you compose, how does it work? I mean, we've heard the, the, what you just did, some powerful stuff. How does it get put together? Um, it gets put together through uh, playing together. So there's a, there's a structure, you know, a, right. a rudimentary structure in which Jacob and I come up with. And then we bring the band in for rehearsal and then through live show. And the songs develop. They're, what you heard tonight was, was not how we played it, you know, two years ago or even two months ago. Um, we, we, have to, we have to grow. And our songs are just vehicles, you know, and they showcase how we've evolved, especially in a live situation where we take... Um, we take great, great care in utilizing the freedom mm -hmm. of, of the live setting. You know, that, that's what it's all about, freedom. So the, the song is a vehicle, and the story behind the song is the motivation to in which we, you know, perform and create this emotional um, roller coaster ride, as we like to say. So you just get together and start playing and riffing and whatever, and it turns into something, and then you formalize it in a way, but it's always free to improv for improvisation within it. It has to be free. Yeah. It has to be well, free. Well, you have a lot of, obviously a lot of influences from freeform jazz to, I, I, you didn't play, I think, the Jet Setters tonight, but that's, that's, that's got a groove. I mean, that's got a little urban kind of funk feel almost, so you you got a spectrum here, which I'm sure it's always a challenge to get, you know, get played. Before, before I quit, let me ask you one question. I was wondering, when you write, is it always on the guitar, or do you, sometimes you, you do any other instruments? Do you sit down and write in other ways besides with a guitar? I, yeah, I mostly play, uh, uh, write on the guitar, but I've actually in the last few years just been writing some lyrics without the guitar, because okay. I think for a long time it was, you know, I'd get a groove going on the guitar and it, um, the lyrics were really secondary to yeah. me and I've, I've sort of flipped the switch and, and changed it. Get some nice melodies too, do you, I mean, is there, you ever do it just like a cappella, figure a melody out, or is it I always, do. is it always chord yeah. based? It's different every time, which yeah. is kind of great and probably terrible. <laughs> I should maybe have more of a formula, but um, yeah, I've been doing it that way recently where I'll have, I have scraps of paper everywhere and little yeah. voice memos on my phone. And um, You go back to them? I do, what, yeah. and I'll just kind of write and start singing, and then now what I do is sing, and, and then I'll find it on the guitar, especially since I play in some open tunings and love playing slide guitar a lot. Um, cool. Well, folks, time is up. Thank you so much for coming. Hey, one more time. JT Project, Natalia Zuckerman, Megan Tui. Thank you so much. On behalf of the ASCAP Foundation, good night. <laughs>